Well, hey there, YouTube. Um, this is J and D Projects here. Um, there's only one problem. There's no J today. Um, I'm flying solo, and uh, uh, he's not feeling too well. Um, we had to make a pretty long and hard trip to Arkansas, and had to work uh, at uh, dispensing with some of my uh, wife's family's business. And it was some long, hard days outside in 100 degree weather. And um, somehow he developed a cold towards the end. And so he's upstairs recuperating right now. So um, I'm gonna be doing the uh, video for this week. Um, and now what I'm gonna do this week is show you guys, now you can find this, uh, th this kind of thing is all over the web, but I want to do this especially for uh, a new friend of mine uh, while we were in arkansas we met a uh, a really fine uh, husband and wife uh, uh, that um, his name's mike and uh, he's really interested in getting into um, forging but doesn't have a lot of forging equipment so i thought today i would show you guys how to make a a simple ground forge um, it does not take a lot to get into blacksmithing. You just have to want to. You can do it for virtually nothing. If you, you can take spare stuff from around your house to make things uh, in order to, uh, to, to for, for the forge and, and even for an anvil. Um, we we'll, might we'll, we'll talk about that later. But today it's specifically directed towards the forge itself. Now, to get ready, I'm going to have to put the camera down and uh, show you all some things. So let me start here by moving this camera into place. And okay. So for a, for a forge, there's really two things that you need. You need a heat source and you need an air source. Well, you can see the air source is a, in my case, is going today is going to be a blow dryer. Okay, now um, I I took this out of my wife's bathroom, so uh, guys, uh, and uh, you can uh, get uh, you know exactly where to get a uh, an air source now. Um, just be prepared to go to Walmart and buy her a new one. Okay, um, and uh, so. Uh, there's that. Now, we'll talk about the, the heat source in just a minute because there's a few things we need to take care of. We can't just put this plastic blow, blow dryer right you know, into the forge because the forge is gonna get up you know, 1,800, 2,000 degrees or even more. So we can't, we can't have this plastic there because it will long since melt and, and it'll ruin it. So we need to deliver it through a metal pipe of some sort. Now I have a couple of metal pipes here. I have a, I have this piece of pipe, and then I have this piece of tube stock. It's just uh, square stock. Uh, well, it's called tube stock, but um, it's square tube. And I'm going to be using this, okay, uh, for to to show you to build the forge today. Now, why wouldn't I want to use something like this? Well, this is a piece of three quarter inch pipe and it would be fine to use, except for one thing, it's galvanized. That means that it has a layer of zinc deposited on the surface here and probably on the inside as well. As you can see, you may not be able to see that very well, but you can see that it's galvanized on the inside as well. This pipe would not be good to use around a forge because the zinc coating will vaporize and it zinc is that zinc vapor is very toxic and um, you don't want to breathe that so anytime you are working around a forge or welding or anything like that you want to make sure that you're not using galvanized pipe now if you're uncertain as to whether or not your pipe is galvanized or not you can easily find out muriatic acid you can buy this at any of the big box stores, probably even Walmart sells it. Uh, don't know for sure, but um, I probably got this at a hardware store. Um, and uh, anyway, it, it's, uh, it's for etching concrete. Now muriatic acid is just a dilute solution of HCl, hydrochloric um, acid. 
and uh, that's the muriatic is the uh, uh, old name for hydrochloric acid all right so I have um, we reuse our HCl uh, so it's it's going to be water clear if you pour it right out of the bottle but I'm I'm using I've got some here in this uh, little cup here that is uh, that has been used before so it's got a bit of color to it however it's still going to work for this demonstration now if you're concerned that your pipe or whatever material metal you have is galvanized and remember galvanized stuff is bad for forges and welding anything like that we don't want anything like that around that you can easily determine it by just sticking it into the HCL and I'm going to try to get the camera close can you see bubbles forming I hope you can okay it's kind of hard to see but right there you can see bubbles okay that's the hydrochloric acid reacting with zinc it reacts with zinc to form hydrogen gas and um, zinc chloride in fact that's how come this is uh, this is yellow is because we've degalvanized now you can see also the part that was in the the the, the um, the acid has turned starting to turn black because that galvanized the, that layer of zinc is being eaten off okay so this pipe is unsuitable and we don't want to use that now I'm gonna set I need to put this in the sink so I'm gonna cut off the video and I'll be back with you in a second okay I'm back now um, so you know, HCl is a very strong acid. I mean, the muriatic acid is dilute. It's, it's a dilute acid, but it's still very, very strong. So you want to make sure you don't get it on you. Um, and uh, I just want to just reiterate this one more time to make sure that everyone understands this. You see, I have two nails here. Let me get them more into the, into the picture here. In fact, I'm going to... I think I'm going to do this okay so here are two nails okay now you should be able to tell which one is galvanized and which one is not this one is the galvanized one it's silver it's it has no rust on it it even some it has kind of a weird kind of shine to it um, that one is galvanized this nail is not Okay. And you can see that, number one, it's got rust on it. Uh, galvanized materials typically don't have rust. That's why you galvanize things, is to prevent them from rusting, or at least to reduce the problem of corrosion. Um, so, once again, please be careful and never, ever, ever use these uh, anything that's galvanized in a, in a forge situation or welding. Okay, because that zinc vapor is very, very dangerous. Now let's move on to talking about the, the air source. Okay, once again, like I said, we can't have the blow dryer right up next to the forge because it's going to melt the plastic of the blow dryer. So we need to deliver it through a tube, through a metal tube. And so what I have here is a piece of square stock. I've already shown that to you. Well, it's a tube stock rather, a square tube stock. Now, I, mine has a couple of holes in it because this was used for something else. So I've just duct taped those holes closed and I'm leaving this end open. So you can see the open end and plus there's a, a hole here. Now what I'm going to do is to make a very simple blower, I'm just going to put that right up against there and I'm going to duct tape it, okay, to the piece of tube stock. Once again, you can use round anything that's hollow but just so long as it's metal and not galvanized I can't emphasize that enough I'll never not emphasize that enough because um, it you have to be very very careful with that and it's not something to to say oops um, I used some galvanized accidentally because <clears throat> if you breathe in the zinc it can be very very harmful to you or to anyone that's around so you have to be super careful forging in general you know blacksmithing in general is a pretty dangerous uh, 
uh, uh, proposition. You just have to exercise proper safety uh, protocols and you'll be just fine. Uh, now, so now we got this all together. We're going to go outside and uh, look at how we're going to build our ground forge now. Okay. All right. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay. So here we are outside now. And um, what I have up here is basically the, just the elements of what you need to start your fire. The, you have to have the air source, which is the blow dryer we just finished working with. Some kindling. And you can do that any way you want to. I mean, I tend to use old shop uh, paper towels and stuff like that and, and little pieces of wood that I, I save into a barrel and, and then pull out as kindling when I need it. Or you can use lighter fluid. I have a cigarette lighter here for, uh, to, uh, to start the fire. And then for the fuel for the forge, it needs to be lump charcoal. Now, this is not briquette. these are not briquettes okay briquettes are those little squarish things that are kind of rounded on top and bottom those are called charcoal briquettes and that's basically charcoal powder that's been pressed into a form okay this you can see is actually just pieces of wood now maybe we'll do a video uh, one day on how to make this because you can make this at home yourself you don't have to buy it however uh, places like Walmart, Dollar General, any place that sells, uh, you know, uh, uh, material to grill out with will have this kind of charcoal. Because the lump, the, the lump charcoal. So here's a, here's a piece that's see how that's a long piece of uh, uh, wood that was turned into charcoal here. That's what all this is. It's just wood that's been turned into charcoal. Um, uh, the briquettes don't get as hot. You don't get as much BTU value out of the briquette as you do out of this lump charcoal. In fact, this lump charcoal is historically what blacksmiths used back in the day uh, before coal became readily available uh, because they could make it themselves, cut down a tree, uh, make their, make their uh, lump charcoal, and then that, that's what they used to fuel their forge. Now, how are we gonna make our forge body itself? Well, I've put together four things here. I found a, found a brick, and I found three uh, um, uh, cinder blocks. Now, you can make it out of anything you want to. You can make it out of field stone. I have some flat rock here that I'm going to put on top of this in just a minute after we get it going. But you can make it out of bricks, all out of bricks, out of just rocks you find in the yard. Um, you can make it out of anything. You just need something that it has some kind of insulation value to it. Um, and I'm just going to build mine right on the ground. Um, you know, if you were going to make a more permanent feature, you might want to put a bottom to it. But I'm just doing a quick demonstration here. And then I am going to uh, 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 do just a little bit of blacksmithing here in a minute. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that later. But first, let's get this thing fired up. So, um, let me put this uh, camera down. And again, I'm flying by myself. And so, um, I'm not the best camera person in the whole world. Um, I'm also not very good at describing things sometimes. So, I hope what I'm telling you is making sense so what I'm doing here I'm just putting down something to get the fire started with okay so we need to get our fire started and um, you should be able to figure out however it is you like to start your own fires that's works for me um, but this will get us started I think and if we end up having a little trouble we do have some uh, uh, fluid some lighter fluid back here that we can use um, but let's see if we can get this thing started first just without that I'm sort of thinking we can alright so I'm going to let this go for just a minute and once it gets going I'll come back with you and we will uh, get the charcoal on 
Okay, I'm gonna go on ahead and start putting some charcoal on here. And, uh, um, you know, the one thing I forgot to do, guys, <laughs> you know, is to put the uh, air source in. You gotta have the air source. I bet you were thinking, well, where's the, where's the air at? Well, it's coming. All you gotta do is just stick that baby in here. I'm gonna pull this brick off here for a second. And we're just gonna run that thing in here like that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another brick here. Thing is going pretty good let's go on ahead and throw some charcoal on that now and then I'll plug in the, the blow dryer and we'll get that thing going okay now let me go plug that dryer in all right now you see when I turn that on you see how high that fire gets So let me put some more charcoal on there. I want to get that thing going good. Now you see how it's smoking like this and you can see a lot of flames back there in the back. I don't know, it's so bright out here. You might not be able to see the flames. But what we want to do, it's just sort of almost like cooking hamburgers on the grill. You know, you want to get, uh, you want to get it burned down so you basically get to the white stuff. Well, what we're going to burn it down to is till we get to the red stuff. The coals will get real red and they'll stop smoking. And that's kind of where we want to be. Because right now the fire is not very hot. If you see all that smoke, the fire is just not very hot. And so we've got to let it get, we got to let it get, you know, good and hot before we can actually do any forging. So we're just going to let that burn for a second. I'll be back with you when it's good and going, okay? Okay, guys, we're getting it going here pretty good. Now, I'm going to turn this, the blow dryer back on, and I want you to listen for the crackling. Can you see how it, can you hear it crackling, and can you see the little pops and stuff? Um, What's happening there is, uh, you know, it's just the, it's the way this uh, lump charcoal behaves. And it pops and crackles a lot, um, especially when you first put it on. So, you know, and those little pops, those little things that pop off there are gonna be, you know, really hot. And, you know, if they get on you, you're gonna feel a little burn, so you have to watch yourself. Um, and uh, we're just about ready to try out a bit of, uh, a little bit of forging work here um, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to get this going and again here let's get, let's get a little more work here now you see how it's getting really red down in there see, that's good stuff okay and I've got a little bit of dark stuff on top that can act as a uh, almost as a insulator and so we are just about ready to, to put a piece of iron in the fire here let me go get a piece of metal here okay I've got a piece of half inch round bar I'm just gonna stick it right in there okay and put a little more charcoal here on top just to keep it you know, you got to make sure you have plenty of fuel now. Now, now working a coal forge is different than Okay, YouTube. I don't know when my phone my 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 GoPro kicked off, but um, it got too hot, so it turned itself off. 
I really like this uh, 11 black that it'll turn itself off if it gets too hot but it's very irritating when you're working by yourself and you don't know when the camera shut off because it overheated um, it's one thing I don't like about the GoPros um, like everything else about them except for that's the only thing I found that I don't like and and I really don't like it um, so uh, I'm hoping they can figure a way to, to solve that maybe in future models. Um, any rate, uh, back to this. So we've got the fire going and I let my iron get cold here. So I'm gonna have to heat it back up again. So, so let me get it hot again. As you can see, that fire is really going down in there. You should be able to see the red coals. And I'm gonna throw some more wood on it and more charcoal on it now once again you can see how it's really popping that's that's just the characteristic of charcoal you just have to kind of get used to it and um, so and like I said before I really like having a hand crank rather than a mechanical blower because you can control how much air that goes to your uh, to your fire now you there are ways to do that with these mechanical ones you can find on the internet several different ways to make these uh, air boxes that you can uh, have baffles in to control how much air is going to your fire I didn't want to go to that detail I just want to show how to make a basic forge and you just turn your blow dryer on and off that's the easiest thing to do to get started once you get used to the fire and the forge and you're going you can always upgrade your stuff and uh, uh, at that point but as you can see we have got a red hot uh, it's hard to see out in the sun it's hard to see molten or red steel out in the sun let me go over here into the shop and you can see that we have a perfect piece of metal here for forging and um, and so you can i can i think i think i'm showing the anvil here um you can Now, so I'm just putting, I'm just starting to put a taper on it. And, you know, I'm using this small hammer because it was the closest one I had available. I'd probably want to use a little bigger hammer to get started uh, with this. But, um, you know, the thing that when you're just starting out, a, a ball peen hammer is a perfect hammer to use. Now, I've got lots of different hammers, but the ball peen, okay guys um, my camera shut off again but i hope you got to see the basics of what we're talking about um, again uh, a very simple setup i'll just take you right back out there and just kind of end up the video out here but you can see just how simple this construction is it's nothing but a few center blocks or bricks and again it, you can put uh, something on top here that just helps you know keep the heat in like that uh, if you want to and then you can see when we get that thing I don't know if you can see down in there or not but it's it's really smoking down there okay and that's how you can start with your first your first forge very very simple very very inexpensive what do you watch out for remember no galvanized anything pipe metal anything nothing galvanized at all near the forge um, um, that's the first thing uh, the second thing is just remember that when you use the lump charcoal it's going to pop a little bit at the beginning and I assume that's because there's uh, moisture that's inside the briquette that's not or the the lump that's not all out 
and so when you start heating it it vaporizes and it pops off little pieces again those be a little they're a little hot when they hit you but you know it doesn't hurt anything i mean i had several pieces hit my arm here when i was working and you can't tell um it's just a very small contact it only feels it only burns for just a second uh but you do need to watch out this is very very hot um so you know no fooling around it um and uh there you go so i was going to do uh another uh add add another forging uh component to this but since my camera's shutting down it's such a hot day out here today and everything i'm just going to cut it off here and i'll do another video showing um um how to straighten a uh, uh how to properly straighten a uh, a lawnmower blade not as easy as you think um, but these things are expensive these days so if you bend one you can straighten it but you need a forge and you got to have some oil and we'll talk about all that maybe in the next video um, so i wanted to thank mike for uh the opportunity to get to meet him and to spend some time with him over in arkansas i hope you enjoyed this video it was kind of an impromptu thing i'm off my game i'm never really on my game but i'm really not on my game without my without john with me um because he helps keep me straight and uh so i had to fly alone today as you know so thanks for being with us and we'll see you next time adios